Hi, this is Shifra's Magic Alcove, and I am Shifra Bradigan. I'm going to talk today about the elements, and the pentagram, and how we use it, and why we use it, and what we use it for. It's used in most forms of paganism, but not all, obviously, but I do use the pentagram quite a bit. And one of the reasons why I use it is because it's a symbol with clear understanding on the other planes as to its meaning and its purpose. This is the pentagram that I use. The pentagram is a five-pointed star and I use it with a circle around it in order to describe it in space and time and allow it to be able to be used appropriately. And the one that I use are the elements in this direction. Top point being the spirit, this point being the air, the earth, the fire, and the water. There's a lot of other types of pentagrams that are out there with the elements in different directions. The only commonality between them seems to be that they all include the spirit as the top point. But this is the one that I am most familiar with and the one that I'm most comfortable with and seems to be one of the pentagram forms that's been around about the longest. Everyone's got their reasons for changing things around. The important thing is understanding the elements themselves, not so much where they are. But since I'm the one who's doing this, we're using the one I like. <clears throat> so one of the things that you use the pentagram for <clears throat> is to help the, create the space in which to communicate with spirits and your deities if you work with them um, and to create a safe environment both for you and for them. The idea of having a space between the worlds so that it's special. You're making an environment that's special for you and, and that's comfortable for spirit beings in order to communicate. <clears throat> so, in practicing doing the invoking pentagrams, and there's five different invoking pentagrams, one for each of the elements, I've discovered that there is I know um, a hidden meaning or a hidden secret or an open secret, I'm not sure what to call it, about why we do them in the directions that we do them. So for example, when we invoke air, the invoking pentagram starts over, this is air, sorry, the invoking pentagram starts at water and it goes from the water point to the air point and the question is why? And my answer is because you're approaching the element of air, its kingdom, and you're sort of like knocking at the door and introducing yourself. And then you're pulling the air element out of the air kingdom and bringing it into your space so that you have it available for use. And then you're describing a circle around it in order to give it material a material presence in time and space so um, once you do that or once I do that what I like to do is to take that pentagram and now that I've put a circle around it I can move it around and put it wherever I want and then I take it and I place it into the east for me it's the east but place it into wherever the element for air is that you're using you can do this in front of your own body. You can do this in your sacred space. It doesn't matter wherever you are. It doesn't have to be a specific place. It's just the fact that you acknowledge that this is the element of air and that you are bringing it in for yourself. You can ask the elements, elemental beings to watch over you, to guide you, to protect you, to clear you. Element of air is associated with uh, the mind and mental clarity and thoughts and communication 
and things like that. Associations, excuse me, associations range, um, and the more you learn about them, and the more internal associations you create with them, the better able you are to work with the element. And when we speak of the elements here, we're not talking specifically about the physical element itself, although certainly the idea of wind comes in when you're invoking the air element, because you can imagine a wind coming into your circle or into your space or into your mind, clearing your body and that kind of thing. But it's more than that. The elements are more than just their physical representations. They're, they're energetic and representations. So that would be invoking the air element. And you do that with all of the elements. So if we go to fire, which is down here next, to invoke it, we'll want to start up here at the top at the spirit element and go down towards the point, the fire point, and then about opening up that kingdom and pulling the energy from the fire element and bringing it up and inscribing that circle around till you get to the back to the beginning where you started. And then again making that clockwise circle around the place. And then you can pick it up and put it into the direction of fire. And you can also pull it towards yourself and imagine imagine that the fire element is coming into your space and cleansing and clearing yourself and your room and your space and whatever. <clears throat> and then put it back where it belongs. And the fire element is passionate and energetic and willful and warm and expanding. <clears throat> And these are some of its qualities. And when we talk more about elements in different sections, we can get more into those aspects. But right now we're just focusing on how to actually draw the pentagram. <coughs> so the next element that I would work with would be water. And water is over here. So again, the same thing, in this case starting over at the air point and going towards the water point and then describing and pulling in that water energy into the room, circling it around like so, and then picking it up and placing it in the direction that you associate with water. And water is intuitive, um, it's emotional, it relates to communication with spirits, things that aren't seen very well, dream communication, a lot of things like that. And you can again pull that energy into your space to help clear your mind so that you're better able to hear the intuitive thoughts and inspirations from the spirits that you're working with or from whatever working that you're doing and then place it back where it belongs. And then earth, which is the direction I'm sitting in. Uh, this is our earth altar in our temple. And again, earth down here, you start again at the top like you do for fire. And then you go towards the earth point and bring it around and pull that energy into your space and then scribe it around like so and then place it in your mind behind you or behind me <laughs> I don't know where you're sitting and then pull the earth energy into the space to help purify and ground your space and help ground yourself and then put it back so that it's sitting there so that would be the four directions. The spirit as the fifth direction is the part that goes above and below and it represents the element Akaja. Uh, 
And the cause is sort of difficult to describe because it's more ephemeral as an element than the other elements are, for example. So Akasha is kind of the fabric of the universe. It's everything, everywhere, everyone, and it's nothing and nowhere and no one and no time and all time. It's difficult to connect with, with words. It's much more of a feeling that you get. So for spirit, since spirit is everything, I just go up to spirit and pull it down and bring it around. <clears throat> and then again, place it, in this case, above the circle and below the circle and then you can connect those things together and make a sphere, a ball of energy. And you can imagine that there's lines of light that are going around all these things. That is true too when you're drawing the pentagram in the air. You visualize, in the beginning of blue-white light seems to be the easiest one to visualize and it also seems to be the easiest color for spirits to see. I think that that particular kind of light energy is what attracts them to us in the first place. So for people who have the gift, it's like you're a lighthouse and a beacon. And this is a way of anyone who's practicing to become more like that. <clears throat> so when you're done with whatever the working is that you're doing, that you did this for, then you want to release those energies. And so in order to release those energies, you're going to go in the opposite direction. I don't worry about releasing the, the Akasha, the spirit energy, the above and below, because that's always there. This is more an acknowledgement of the fact that it's there than it is of bringing it in so much. But the four elements themselves, you want to try and make the room uh, back to a neutral space like before you started. And it's a way of going back to a regular everyday reality. And so this is an important step. So for example, with the North or the Earth that we're sitting in right now, since you've already opened up that door and brought all this energy in, and now the focus, you start at the point of the element, and the focus is to close that door first. So you're closing the door to the elemental kingdom, and then you're going to be pulling that energy that you've drawn in to dissipate it. So the door is closed, and then you go and sort of like cleansing out the earth that you have in your space, and then undoing it in its time and space, like so and allowing it to release back. And so then you're letting it go. <clears throat> and you do that with all of the elements as well. So water would be the next one that we did. So again, you start at the water point. And imagine that you've closed the door to the water kingdom, and now you're collecting the extra water energy that you pulled in to your space and you're undoing it all and releasing it and letting it go. Next one would be fire. Again, starting at the fire element and you're going to close that door and then collect all the excess fire that you've brought in and let it release oh, sorry, let it back into the universe, and then air, starting at the air, closing the door, collecting that extra air energy, undoing it in time and space, and releasing the air back to the air element. So whenever you're doing any form of ritual or magic, 
part of the process has to do with setting it up in your mind and in your heart and in your space. And the ritual elements are important because they train your brain to focus on the thing that you're trying to focus on. And they also show the spirit world that you know what you're doing, that you have gotten to a point in your process where you're focused and connected to them more on their language level, which is a language of symbols. And along those lines, there's other systems of the elements. And uh, so I wanted to show those to you. And you can make these yourself. It's not very difficult to make them. You pick up a, put those down that way so they don't <laughs> distract me when I look at them underneath. Um, the, this is a symbol of Akaja again, or spirit. But this is the Indian system, and in India Indian. Um, and they have the closest elemental system of any other culture that's the, I, pretty much identical to the Western magician magical point of view. And so using their particular approaches works really well for those of us who want to expand into other cultures and different eclectic devices and stuff for working with the elements. How they use these, these are doorways that you can travel through in which to understand and comprehend and communicate with the beings that exist in these different kingdoms. And so the way you use them is you stare at them. Uh, this is called a flashing color system. And you stare at them sort of with a soft look you sort of relax your eyes and let your eyes be a little bit on focus and then you gaze until they start to flash back and forth and you start to see that kind of edge sort of vibrating and then you look onto a blank piece of paper and you'll see the opposite so you'll get instead of a white background with a black egg you'll see a white egg and a black back so I had to take a short break because I started coughing. That's why I suddenly have a glass of water appearing next to me. So these are tapwas. This is the Indian elemental system. And in India, <clears throat> they do things about the same as we do. So this is the element of spirit or akaja. And so it's represented as a black egg on a white background. These are really simple to make yourself. You can just buy these circles. I bought these circles of uh, wood at Walmart, sanded them down, and then painted them with acrylic paint. <clears throat> and the idea is to have uh, as much of a flashing effect as you can. So the way you use it is you stare at the image until it starts to flash. This is a a technique that some other magical system uses as well for symbols. And as you gaze at it with soft eyes, or slightly out of focus eyes, um, when it starts to flash, then you look at a blank piece of paper and you'll see the image reverse itself. So instead of having a black egg in a white background, you'll have a white egg in a black background and then that white egg shape it becomes the doorway to enter into the element and to explore it, meditate on it, see what happens and what you come across. So I'll show you each of the different elements. So this one, this is the air element uh, in the Tapa system. And again, it's the same way that you work with it. You look at it, focus on it with soft eyes, wait for it to begin to flash, transfer your gaze to a blank piece of paper, and then see the opposite color, and then focus on that opposite color as an entrance into the elemental kingdom. Something you should know about entering these kingdoms, it's considered rude to say it 
one way <clears throat> to just sort of go up to any spirit being that you might encounter and start asking them questions. You're kind of going into their environment and their house and it's considered a better to wait for them to approach you. So in the beginning, you may go into one or more of the elemental kingdoms and just be looking around and see things or not see things because it can take a while to develop your ability to visualize and uh, don't worry about it because they're going to know that you're there and they're going to be watching and paying attention to what you do and how you behave so be respectful and try not to be too anxious and too excited about what you might find and be open to communicating with any of the beings that might choose to come up and have a chat. So this one would be the air element. And then this one here in this direction, this is a silver crescent but I hold it in this direction because it's the water element and this sort of represents that cup shape. Water having no shape of its own, it takes on the shape of whatever contain container you put it into. And so again, it's the same instructions for each of these tatwas. And it takes like maybe a week or so to make a set of your own. Um, and then you focus on the symbol and wait for it to start to flash and look at the blank piece of paper and then visualize yourself entering into that kingdom. And as you do this, you'll find that some of these are easier to work with than others. You'll find it easier to communicate with or to visualize certain elements um, as opposed to other elements and that's a clue that you can use to figure out where your particular elemental balance may be um, and may, where you may be lacking in an element or blocking an element. Because the ideal is to be as evenly distributed elementally as you can because you want to be in balance with all of the elements and with yourself. We'll have other conversations about that. So then and this is the fire element, a nice bright red triangle and green background. And it's always fascinating to me when I use these to see the switch from a red triangle to a green triangle. And the reason why you use the opposite color to enter into the elemental kingdom when you're doing the exercise is so that once you're in there, it's easy for you to find the exit. So you can see where the exit is, the thing you came into. If for some reason you lose sight of that, don't worry. You'll end up back in your own body pretty easily. It's not like you're going to get trapped inside of an elemental kingdom. Uh, you just think about your body and boop, you'll be back where you belong. But it's a good exercise because then you're making your visualization more complete. And the more complete you can make it, the more information you'll get out of the experience. So that's the fire. And then this last one here, this is the earth element, the square in a purple background. And uh, I love to hear some of your experiences if you explore this exercise. And Make sure when you're doing these that you actually have something you can write with as ready to hand. So when you come back, you can write down your experiences because a lot of times these sort of things come and go pretty readily in the beginning especially, but even after a lot of practice, you might forget specifics and uh, forget words that you might hear or forget the impressions that you have. And these things are are important uh, to remember and to teach yourself about different aspects of your own personality and the world around us when we exist in a magical world. 
there's not as much language available to talk about it, so experience is the best instructor. So those are the Tatwas. And I guess that's probably enough information for one video. <clears throat> so this is Shifra Bradigan and Shifra's Magic Alcove, and blessed be, have a great day.